I greet you all this morning in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the same time, I want to welcome you for the online service that you may share the word of the Lord. I'm Reverend Albert Karanja. Truly my soul find rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress, I'll never be shaken. Let's pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, for bringing us here this morning that you may hear your word. Give us that understanding to know your will for us. And we pray all this brief and trust in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to do our first Bible reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and I'm reading from verse 3 to 6. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. He is a rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just he is. They are corrupt and not his children. To their shame, they are warped and crooked generation. In this, the way you rep is this the way you repay the Lord, you foolish and unwise people? Is he not your father? you creator who made you and formed you. Our second Bible reading is taken from the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 17 to 18. Therefore, dear friends, since you've been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the rulers and fall from your secure position. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. I salute you all in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today I will be sharing overcoming obstacles to stability. Um, celebrating the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for me on the cross. He suffered in his life here on earth. And I'm also rejoicing in the victory that he got on the cross. And my hope is built on him. Um, this is the beginning of a month. And you're sharing... Raika has said, uh, the way we overcome hindrances or uh, obstacles to stability. We've read from the book of uh, Deuteronomy 32, verse 3 to 6. In this um, uh, particular passage, uh, in itself is a song by Moses. Moses spoke as a witness against the rebellious Israel. And he reminds them of their relationship with God, who is a father, and uh, who bought and brought them from slavery. He reminds them that it is God who has established them. And he even shows them that their sin is more foolish and, and unwise in light of God, what God has done for them. It is foolish and unwise to rebel against God who has done so much for them. There are two things that um, 
Moses brings into the picture. One of them is uh, uh, the way God is stable. He has been stable in showing his grace, kindness to the, to, uh, to the children of Israel. He reminds Israel of all God's goodness to them. Uh, this is in both, um, he's trying to configure them of their sin and remind them of God's love and grace and the way they could return to him. I said the way Moses has shown the way God is stable. When this one said that um, he is rock, his works are perfect, and all his ways are just, a faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just he is. All these are adjectives that describe God, who God is, how stable he is, how firm, and how he doesn't change. On the other hand, he also shows the instability of the children of Israel. They are corrupt, and they are not the children of God. They do not live, arrive the children of God. To their shame, they are warped and crooked generation. That still shows human instability. Although God has been good, consistent in love and his grace, the response of the children of Israel portrays the human instability in character. They are not even ready to, they can't even be able to respond in a good way to God who has been good to them. This is the instability of the highest order. Because even when God has been so good to them, they are not able to respond in the right way to this great God who has always been gracious to them. There is no perfect stability in a human being. Perfect stability ceased from the, uh, since the time Adam fell. And perfect stability only belongs to God alone. God doesn't change. In the book of James, chapter 1, verse 17, it talks about God's stability. Every good thing given and every perfect grace is from above. It comes from the Father of all rights, the creator and the sustainer of heavens, in whom there is no variation, no rising or setting, or chandle caused by his standing. For he is perfect and never changes. God doesn't change. He is stable. He remains firm in character 
and in everything, as opposed to who a human being is. Even the best of human beings, they still have this degree of insabarity. And they do not excel in remaining firm. Although man has lost that perfect stability, but he still admires that. It is thing, it's something that if we are able to build on it, this is also this is a virtue that appeals even to us as human beings. And it is an esteemed value. When we hear that God is stable and a human being is not stable, how can we be able to grow from our instability and hold on God's stability, who he is. We are reminded that there is no perfect stability in a human being. Reminded from our root, where we were born, in terms of the root from Adam and Eve, we are unstable. They left a legacy of instability. But on the other hand, we can build our lives around the atonement of Christ. And we can peg our stability on the victory of Christ. The way he lived here as a human being the way he overcame the sin, the way he overcame death, he rose on the dead. We can peg our victory around the victory of Jesus Christ and live a stable life. Because of the victory of Jesus Christ on the cross. There are those things that are in a human being that they hinder human stability. There are several things that we should overcome. For example, the habitual sin. When we are given to sin as a habit, it gives us instability. There is also what you call emotional instability. And then there is unbelief. So when we have the somberness of mind as believers, we are stable and we can be able to walk in stability. When it comes to the habitual sins, one of the habitual sins that are very common in our human life is pride. We have also the giving in to the desires of the flesh. We have greed. And how can we be able to eliminate and overcome all these kinds of sins that become a habit and deny us the state of a stable life in our Christian life.
somber-minded people are those who have been able to build their foundation on the atonement works of Jesus Christ on the cross. Building a strong faith. And when we build a strong faith in Jesus Christ, growing in his grace, understanding the significance of his death on the cross and his victory over death, we become stable and can overcome every hindrance to stability. We must build our faith on the atonement that Jesus Christ made. When we know that Jesus Christ overcame sin, we have the courage and the desire and the conviction that there is no power above the power of God. Through the grace of God and the power displayed on the cross, we can stand again as the desires of the flesh, the rust of the eyes, the pride of this life. And become stable Christians in character. We can be able to overcome habitual sins that build themselves in our lives, making us unstable. Instability is a liability. Both as a corporate body, the church loses a rot when we fail to hold on the stability in our personal lives. We also lose a rot because of our perpetual. Instability. No one can attach a lot of importance to our opinions, to our message, if we remain unstable in our faith. Today we are given to God. Tomorrow we are given to the world. Christians given to habitual sins. They become a liability. No one will be influenced by a person who is unstable. No church can grow when we are given to instability in the world, all of us, we must desire and we must be committed through trusting in God. In our second reading, we are warned and reminded in 2 Peter 3.17-18 Therefore let me warn you or be warned beloved knowing these things beforehand be on your guard 
so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men who distort doctrine and fall from your own steadfastness of mind, knowledge, truth, and faith. But grow spiritually mature in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now to the day of eternity. Therefore, dear friends, since you've been forewarned, be on your guard that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawlessness and fall from your secure position. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And to him be glory both now and forever. This is a call to stability. It is not only a call to stability. We are pointed into how we can be stable. Holding on the secure position where we are placed by the grace of God. Because through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, the sacrifice that he offers for us, we receive forgiveness of our sins through repentance and start a new life in Jesus Christ. It is a through, it's through the atonement of Jesus Christ on the cross that we always find ourselves in a position of stability. Then that hear my words and obey them. The one who hears my word and obeys it is like a wise man who built on the crock. Our faith in Jesus Christ gives us a firm foundation of stability, obeying and reading in the word. Is one way that you overcome every kind of instability. Human life through the Adamic root, we do not have perfect stability. But in Christ Jesus, we are born anew. And a new legacy is said by our Lord, Jesus Christ. And the power of God is manifested on the cross. This is where we build our every day-to-day -to -day strength. This is where we draw our stability from. Because we believe in Christ, who of us came sin and death. We are optimistic. We can repent our sins and change our ways. We can be stable, not through our power. But our victory is packed around the victory of Jesus Christ. A stable man can be stable in the grace of God, building our hope, building our courage in the victory that Jesus Christ got on the cross. Instability 
ruins our usefulness. You can't continue to be so useful in the kingdom of God when you are unstable. It even becomes a disgrace. If today we are given to God and another day we are given to the world, Today we are honoring God. Tomorrow we are dishonoring him. That inconsistency ruins our usefulness in the kingdom of God. We are not called upon to be stable through our human effort. But we are encouraged to be stable through the atonement works of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the victory of Jesus Christ, we can build our faith. We can build our courage. We can know that because Jesus Christ overcame sin and death, he, being stable like the Father is, born anew in Christ Jesus, we have a gene from the Father. We are connected with the range of God who is stable, both in character, in everything. And our instability as human beings is dealt with. We've been grafted. Into God through his son. Connected to the power of God. The Holy Spirit of God when he comes in us. Gives us that stability. Paul says, walk in spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Because the presence of the Holy Spirit of God in us maintains stability. There is the work of the Holy Spirit in us he gives us that stability that comes from God. Because we have the Spirit of God. That is why we overcome every handle, every obstacle of to, uh, to stability. Not because we are powerful, but because every day we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God, walk in the Spirit. For the Spirit of God gives us the stability we need. It gives us that consistency that we do not have as human beings. It trains us to be truthful. It gives us that consistency we need every day. And it gives us the power to live for what we believe in. Why do we need to retain that day-to-day -day connection with God through prayers? Because every time we are in fellowship with God, We have that connection to stability. No human being is stable by himself or herself. No one can pride in stability without God. While we are strong in one area, we are so weak by ourselves. We have lost that perfect stability. 
Because we are human beings. That is the way Moses reminds the children of Israel. God has been good to you. Is this the way that you respond to a good God? But you see, even when God is good to them, humanly, they are unable to give that response of stability. It is only by the grace of God, through Jesus Christ, that our instability can be overcome. We can overcome the pride of this life. We can overcome every habitual sin. We can live in victory. When we celebrate the victory of Jesus Christ on the cross, it is our victory over sin. It is our victory over instability. It is not Christ who was held by sin. It is us who were held by sin. It is not Jesus Christ. He wasn't fighting his battle. He was fighting our battle over instability. He was fighting our battle. When he overcame sin, he gives us the courage and the power. The battle we see him engaged with on the cross, it is our battle. He fights. We follow him. When he overcomes, we have overcome. It is that victory that gives us the courage. It is that victory that gives us the power. It is that victory that gives us confidence. That is why we believe it is doable. We can be stable. We can be consistent. The presence of the Holy Spirit in us gives us that consistency. And it overcomes the human inconsistency. You need, once again, to look at your life. I need to look at my life. The victory of Jesus Christ deals with our instability. It's only by continued growth in the grace of God that we can be able to realize this great power that overcomes for us. But grow in the grace of God and the knowledge of, of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do not be given dreariness and fall from your secure position. Our secure position is in the grace of God. That is a secure position. A position of stability. Why? It is not dependence on human performance. It depends on what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Still, as I conclude, I remind you, that instability is a liability. It makes us to lose a lot individually and corporately as a church when we drive 
in instability. But when we are stable, we become profitable Christians who build, who in friends, who draw people to Christ, who encourage others that it is doable through Christ Jesus our Lord who overcame sin and death. Let us be revived. Let us be empowered. Let us be encouraged. Let us take all, repent all our habitual sins. Let us seek forgiveness and seek newness of life in Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Our Father and our God, thank you for reminding us that through Jesus Christ, you can overcome every obstacle to instability. We can overcome the pride of this life. We can overcome the rust of the eyes and the desires of the flesh. We can overcome every habitual sin because we depend on the victory of Jesus Christ his atonement for us on the cross. And because he overcame, we can be stable because we are grafted, joined to God who is stable and changing, God who does not waver, but our Lord who remains stable in every aspect. Help us also to be stable in everything that we do. We thank you, we worship you, and it is in Jesus' name that we pray and believe. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us for today's online service. We appreciate your participation and love. We urge you to continue connecting with us through liking, commenting, and sharing these messages with your family and your friends. Don't forget to subscribe for more and more messages. God bless you.